exalt your holy name. You are our Lord. You are our master. We lift up and magnify your name. There is nothing impossible with you. You are our provider. You are our defender. You are our righteousness. Jesus, we lift up your name. We lift up your name. We exalt your holy name. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, we exalt you. We exalt you. We exalt you, Lord. Us. Raval Paz wa Hariyan Tum Sur Jebe Kebras wa Jaduriyam Sumedala Jebe Kebru Ma Shahadu Raba Ram Til Pruz Ma Jaduriyam Raspa Kos Wa Tiyan Thank you, Jesus. We enforce your victory tonight. We exalt your holy name. We give you glory. Open the word for us, O God. Reveal your word, O God. Anoint us to serve you, Lord. Rabbas, watch out and see your name lifted up. We magnify your name, Jesus. Bless everyone who's watching us, O God. Hearing us, O God. Let your word fall upon good hearts, O God. To bear fruit for in their lives. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hi, church. Nice to see you this evening. By faith, I'm seeing you. Uh, uh, this is the month of April, a new financial year. And we're gonna, you know, we wouldn't want to start a financial year like this normally, but we have no choice. We are in our homes. We do not know how our businesses are gonna turn out. We do not know how our jo jobs are going to be. But we are sure of one thing, that the Lord indeed is for us and he will move his hand for our lives. Amen. 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 Uh, so it looks like it's a turbulent weather. But uh, it looks like I'm inside a flight and we have the commander in chief, our pilot, chief pilot, Jesus Christ. And I am the main, main, main attendant, I suppose, and I have my fellow attendants with me. This is Nisha Cyril. Uh, <laughs> this is Tina Jerry. And uh, uh, they're helping, uh, helping uh, to bring the bread to you and the drink to you. So make sure that you're hungry for God's word and you're willing to drink of his spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, you have no choice but to have what we bring you. <laughs> so let's open our Bibles. Let's study God's Word tonight. I want you to read a couple of scriptures for me. It's 3 John, the third letter of John and verse 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. Deuteronomy 15, verse 4. And Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. So if you have your notebooks and pen and the Bible, take it out. Three, four scriptures. 3 John 2, 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 9, Deuteronomy 15, 4 and Proverbs 10, 22. Beloved, yes. I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich, so for though he was rich, yet for your sakes, for yet for your sake, he became poor. He became poor. That you through his poverty, that you through his poverty, might become rich. Might become rich. Deuteronomy 15 verse 4. Except when there may be no poor among you, for the Lord will greatly bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess as an inheritance. Amen. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. Amen. Proverbs chapter 10, 22, I think it's in the King James Version. There is uh, one word that I want to, uh, one letter that I want to highlight there. 10th chapter, verse 22. One more time, is that King James? Uh, NKJV. NK, that's fine. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. So I want to title the message, Do You Have It? The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow with it. Do you have it? Do you have it? This year I pray that you will have it. Amen. The Amen. blessing of the Lord Amen. that Amen. He makes one rich. Amen. 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 A couple of scriptures which the Lord had given us towards the beginning of this year. One of them was... Which one was that? Genesis 1, 28. Yeah, let's, let's look, to, look at that. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. And then God blessed them. And then God blessed them. 
and god said to them and then god said to them be fruitful be fruitful and multiply and multiply fill the earth and yes. subdue it yes have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air yes. and over every living thing that moves on the earth amen i want to pray that you be richly blessed this year amen. that amen. you have it amen. the blessing amen. of god amen and so if you're going to study god's word you're going to find there are seven categories of blessings the first one is what we just read general blessing i want you to say that with me general, general blessing. blessing in other words it works for everyone you don't need to accept jesus here it works for everyone god is saying to human kind mankind what is he saying be blessed be fruitful multiply and fill the earth amen See, God is a God of everybody, but He's a Father to some people. Aren't you glad that He's your Father? Amen. Amen. Yes. God is a God of everybody, but He's a Father to some people. Now, this is a blessing for everyone. Generally, God wants His people to do well. Matthew 5, verse 45 says, He makes the sun to shine on the believer and the unbeliever. He makes the blessing to come down upon everybody. But... God is not wanting his church to just be in the general blessing. He wants to take you up higher than that. So there is a second category of blessing in the scripture, which we call conditional blessings. That is, if you fulfill this condition, that you get blessed. For example, in Hebrews chapter 12, the book of Hebrews, the 12th chapter, and verses 14 to 16, but the 14th verse, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Pursue peace with all people. Pursue peace with all people. And holiness. And holiness. Without which yes. no one will see the Lord. See, without which you can't be raptured. You won't be caught up to meet the Lord. Two things. Pursue peace and holiness. 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 Pursue peace or follow peace and holiness. Without which, so that's a condition. You will never see the Lord. I mean, you can't pull down everybody, speak badly about everybody, and expect to be raptured. That doesn't happen. Pursue peace with all people. Be holy. And then you will see the Lord. Look at another scripture, Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Matthew 7 and verse 7. I thought you knew it by heart. Okay. Okay, Matthew chapter 7, 7. It's the easier. 7, 7, 7, 7. Ask and ask. it will be given to you. Ask and it shall be given to you. So what do you need? You need to ask. It's a condition. If you ask, it shall be given. Knock and the door shall be opened. Seek and you will find. So the condition is you ask, you knock, you seek. Look at chapter, uh, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verse 38. Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verse 38. Give and it will be given to you. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure. Good measure. Press down. Press down. Shaken together. Shaken together. And running over. And running over. Will be put into your bosom. Yes. For with the same measure that For you with use. the same measure that you use. It will be measured back to you. It shall be measured back to you. So see, look at that. You give, it shall be given back. So you can't expect to receive from God without giving. Give, it shall be given back. The same measure that you use will be the same measure that will be handed over back to you. Look at Matthew chapter 6, 14, 15. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 6, 14, 15. For if you forgive men their trespasses, yes. your heavenly Father will also forgive you. If you forgive, the Lord says, I will also forgive you. My Father will also forgive you. Some people say, no, I have never forgive that person. I can never forgive that person. Can you imagine that God saying that to you? I can never forgive you. Forgive, and I will forgive you. Read it one more time. Matthew 6, 14. 
For if you forgive men their trespasses, yes. your heavenly Father will also forgive you. If you forgive the earthly people around you, maybe your spouse, do you fight with your husband? On the mic. At times. Huh? At times. <laughs> Louder. At times. At times. Does he forgive you? Yes. <laughs> what about you? At times. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have to forgive your spouse. Sometimes, you know, I've seen people, sometimes in family, sometimes people say they have an anniversary of their fights, you know. In 2040, you did this to me in the December. We were on a holiday and then you did this to me. Every year you keep reminding and you bring, you haven't forgiven. It is said that, you know, sometimes we can forgive our spouses. But uh, what about your mother-in-laws? A little bit more tougher or easier? Lovely mother-in-law. Wow. <laughs> I hope she's watching you today. <laughs> <laughs> she would be born again and saved tonight. <laughs> you know, sometimes people find hard to forgive their mother-in-laws. You know, it is said that sometimes two women can, can't share the kitchen. I'm sure your story would have been different if you were staying in the same house with her. So a little bit more tougher? Could be. Could be. <laughs> Aren't you glad that you're an architect and you could build your own home? And <laughs> you got to choose to forgive. Maybe the pastor, somebody who was ushering you in the church, somebody who was your business partner, it is said that one of the, you know, certain diseases are psychosomatic. It is said that unforgiveness and bitterness can actually lead to cancer. I do not know how much it is true, but I just read somewhere, it can actually lead to cancer. I'm not, sure, I'm not saying everybody who is cancerous has got that. What I'm saying is, certain times, when you keep this, it's going to fester up into your body. Life is fragile. Colossians chapter 3 verse 19. Colossians chapter 3 verse 19. Shall I read? Yes, please. Husbands, Husbands love your wives. Love your wives. And do not be bitter toward them. And do not be bitter towards them. I've seen people not enjoying the blessing of God or being prospering or prosper just because of this one thing. Bitterness. Husbands might be working hard. They might be tithing. They might be serving the Lord. But you have bitterness in your heart. You know, I wish I could teach you there are 25 major reasons why people don't prosper. God wants you to prosper. He wants you to prosper in the scripture that we read in the beginning in three areas. He wants you to prosper. Uh, 3 John 2. He wants you to just prosper financially in all things he wants you to prosper in your health and he wants you to prosper in your soul and I could preach it for years but if I have something against my wife if I am bitter in my heart that blessing doesn't flow I don't have it look at Malachi chapter 3 10th verse and 12th verse Malachi chapter 3, 10 and 12. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse. That there may be food in my house. That there may be food in my house. And try me now in this. And try me now in this. Says the Lord of hosts. Says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven. Yes. And pour out for you such blessing that yes. there will not be room enough to receive it. Yes. Amen. See, it's a conditional blessing. You tithe and God says, I will fill you with so much of blessing that there won't be enough room. You will have it. The blessing of God. 
Look at another scripture. Exodus chapter 23 verse 25. Exodus chapter 23 verse 25. So you shall serve the Lord your God. So you shall serve the Lord your God. And he will bless your bread. And he will bless your bread. And your water. And your water. And I will take sickness. And I will take sickness. Away from the midst of you. I will take sickness away from the midst of you. It's a conditional blessing. You shall serve the Lord your God. And the Lord is promising. He will bless your food and water. And will remove every sickness from your household. So, it's a conditional blessing. How would you serve in the church? Usher. You usher in? Yeah, that's nice. I go once in a while before. You go for the intercession? Intercession. <laughs> that is wonderful. What about you, Tina? I also usher in. I also usher in. Yes. And I help out in the children's ministry, Noazak. Yeah. I See, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what kind of serving. You, you could be sweeping the church. You could be just making sure the chairs are, chairs are put in place. You could be serving communion. You could be standing behind the camera. You could be editing this message. You could be looking into the accounts of the church. But in one way or the other, if you're serving the Lord, it's His promise, you will have it. He will bless your food and water. He will remove sickness from your life. Amen. May you be sickness free. Amen. Amen. May every affliction, infirmity leave your lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So the third blessing, uh, the, the third way that uh, I said general blessing, conditional, conditional blessing. blessing, and the third one is Blessing of association. Can you say that with me? Blessing, blessing, blessing of, of, of association. 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 Amen. What do I mean by that? Look at Job chapter 14, verses 7. Job chapter 14, verse 7. It's just before Psalms. I'm giving a lot of scriptures. It's because I wanted to learn the scriptures during these times. Job chapter 14, verse 7. For there is hope for, for there a is tree. Hope for a tree. If it is cut down, if it is cut down, that it will sprout again. That it will sprout again, and that its tender shoots will not cease. Yes, though its roots may grow old, though its roots may grow old in the earth, in the earth, and its stump may die in the ground, mm -hmm. yet at the scent of See, I water. See, I want to underline that word, the ninth verse. Yet, yet, through the scent of water, it will bud and bring forth. It will bud and bring forth branches like a plant. Wow, it will bring out branches like a plant. Yet, at the scent, the fragrance, the smell. You, you see perfume, somebody perfumes. You want to smell that, you've got to be close to them. Proximity. Scent. There is association. If you're close, like you smell perfume, mm. not just physical closeness, I'm speaking about a spiritual closeness. You get close to Jesus, you get close in, into the body of Christ, boom. The fragrance of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. relationships look at Genesis chapter 13 there's a saying you know you smell like the company you keep your friends are a prophesy of your future a prophecy of, about your future you tell me who your close five friends are I tell you where you're headed Genesis chapter 13 verse 5. Lot also 
Lot also who went with Abram who went with Abram had flocks had flocks and herds yes see, and tents see Lot who also went with Abram had flocks and herds Lot didn't have flocks and herds and he then go with Abram because he went with Abram association don't work against somebody who has blessed you don't uh, repay with evil somebody who's done good to you you know it's that that scripture did something into my heart yesterday night never repay anyone who has done good to you proverbs chapter 7 do you know that's there the bible the 17th chapter of proverbs and the 13th verse proverbs chapter 17 verse 13 whoever rewards evil for good whoever rewarded evil for good evil will not depart from his house evil will not depart from his house If you do evil to somebody who's done good to you then the bible says you shall not have it evil shall come into your home so never repay evil for evil and especially don't repay evil for good amen amen Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Because you don't want evil in your house. I don't want to lift your hands and say I don't want evil in my house. I don't want evil in evil in my house. house. In Jesus name. 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 Blessing by association. There are people who have been good to you, who have prayed for you, who have released the word over your life. There are people who have been nice to you. who led you to the lord never he be evil, evil for somebody who's done good for you genesis 30 was 27 genesis 30 was 27 and laban and laban said to him and said to him please stay if i have found favor in your eyes uh-huh for i have learned by experience that the lord has blessed me for your sake laban said to jacob listen i know god has blessed me for your sake can we have association i pray that you will have discernment to know who are the right people to be around you that you can have the blessing of god in your life amen amen hallelujah hallelujah blessed be the name of jesus amen, amen. So there is a fourth this is not the part of the message that I want to highlight actually I want to pray for your finances today especially the beginning of this financial year I want to pray that God blesses you that the blessing of God rests with you but I'm just laying a foundation for that the fourth category of blessing is what is called covenanted blessing say that with me covenanted covenanted, covenanted blessing. blessing covenanted blessing covenanted amen blessing. amen for example Sarah gave food when the angels of god visited abraham's tent generations passed away the children of israel children of israel in the wilderness god provided for them supernaturally Amen. because of what abraham and sara did unto the lord's angels when they visited Amen. i pray that your children will never lack in a thing because Amen. of what you have done for the lord Amen. 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 may your children your generations be blessed because of what you have done for the lord amen amen because you made a covenant with god because you did decided to serve him and because you were faithful to the lord your children i said are going to be blessed your generations are going to be blessed amen. your children 
Let the blessing of God come over your generations. May they never lack anything. I have seen the righteous. I have never seen the righteous beg for food or the children out on the streets. May the blessing of God come over your generations. Because you have been faithful to call on the name of Jesus. Amen. Then the fifth category is blessing by inheritance. Say that with me. Blessing, blessing by, inheritance. by inheritance. Genesis 25 verse 6. But Abraham, but Abraham gave gifts to the sons yes. of the concubines mm -hmm. which Abraham had. Yes. And while he was still living, mm -hmm. he sent them eastward mm -hmm. away from Isaac his son mm -hmm. to the country of the east. He gave gifts. He gave an inheritance. It's not your fault that you are blessed by your parents. <laughs> Don't be proud about it. Maybe it is a house, maybe it's a land. You know, I, my grandfather left an inheritance for my parents and for us. It's a blessing. It's, it's not our fault. It's a blessing. Thank the Lord for that. The scriptures also, the Bible says, we are the hair of God. Go hairs with Christ. Amen. Because of our Father in heaven, gave Jesus something. You, ex you experience or you have all that God the Father gave Jesus. Amen. Which means you have authority, you have boldness, you have every spiritual blessing. Amen. 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 Did the Lord lack anything? I mean, did the Lord lack anything? I mean, Jesus did not have a bank account, did he? No. But did he lack anything? No. See, when it was time for him to pay taxes, there was money inside the mouth of a fish. If a fish could carry money, May your wallets carry money in 2020. Amen. May your Amen. bank accounts carry money in 2020. Amen. May your business carry money in 2020. Amen. May your jobs carry Amen. money in 2020. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If a fish could carry money that was needed for Jesus and the disciples, uh, may whatever you put your hands to bring you a blessing financially. Uh. Lift your hand and say, I receive it in the name of the Lord. Uh. Receive it in the name of the Lord. Then there is blessing by sacrifice, a covenanted blessing by sacrifice. Look at Genesis 50 and verse 5. Genesis 50 verse 5. My father made me swear saying... Uh, not uh, Genesis, uh, sorry. Uh, Psalms. Psalms. Psalms 50 verse 5. Psalms 50, 5, 0, verse 5. Every time Tina can't find a scripture fast, she'll point out to Nisha say. Okay. <laughs> Psalms 50, 50 verse 5. 50 verse 5. Gather my saints together to me, uh -huh. those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Yeah, people who have made a covenant with God by sacrifice. Sacrifice your time, your energy for the Lord and for His work. Made a covenant with God. This is what the Holy Spirit put the, the seventh one. It is blessing by discovery, a prophetic blessing. I want you to say that with blessing by discovery. Blessing, blessing by, by discovery. discovery. Prophetic blessing. Prophetic, prophetic blessing. blessing. Deuteronomy 29, 29. Deuteronomy 29, verse 29. The secret things belong to the Lord the our God. Secret things belong to the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed, but those things which are discovered or revealed, belong to us. Belong to us. And to our children forever. And to our children forever. Now, what the Holy Spirit of God told me was, there are a lot of businesses is going to be affected in the world. But God is raising a generation that will have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. 
it will discover new business opportunities will tap into a well that will never run dry not only in your lifetime but to the generations that God has given you a well that will never run dry lift your hand and say I'm going to receive of that a well that will never run out a well that will never run dry a well that will never run dry you will discover it just like Hagar's eyes were open and she saw the well in the wilderness in the desert during these times when the economy of nations are affected when people's businesses are affected their livelihoods are affected uh, that won't be your portion in the name of Jesus uh, because you put your trust in the Lord uh, the Lord is going to open up a well that will never run dry in the name of Jesus wow you will discover a well that will never run dry Rakala <laughs> Right here is Madam Shah. Now I, I pronounce a blessing over your children's businesses, over their livelihoods, uh, that they shall tap into a well that will never run out on them. Rakil Cross, Wakunia, in this time, Lord, in this troublesome time, uh, let there be a well that will open up for your children in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We give you glory, Lord. Yes. Amen. 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 Some of you will discover. A talent that you never had, a skill that you never had, a job that you never had. That's what the Holy Spirit of God told me. Something that you never studied in Harvard or Oxford or in a business school somewhere. In the last days, the Lord said, there'll be pestilences and famines. But in the last days, the Lord said, I will also pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Amen. And the young men shall prophesy, speak into their future. Amen. Amen. Some of you are going to be prophetic business people. Amen. 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 Just like a prophecy is something that is going to happen forth, you will sense in your spirit something that's going to come forth and you're going to move into it in the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Prophetic businessmen. Not the conventional way. This is the time when more than anything else, you need the Holy Spirit of God to open up your eyes. For you to discover the giftings that is inside of you. To discover the well that God has placed inside of you. Some of you are going to see the talents that you thought you never had emerge for. Amen. A grace that you never walked in before. I sense the Holy Spirit of God saying, a grace that you never walked in before. You're going to discover it this season. Rabalaba, worship the Lord wherever you are, in your homes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. God wants you to be blessed. The scripture that you read, He wants you to have it. A blessing not only financially, the three dimensions of prosperity financially, in your health, and in your soul. Beloved, I pray that you prosper in all things and be in good health even as your soul prospers. Somebody tell somebody sitting next to you, my soul is going to prosper. My health is going to prosper. My health is going to prosper. Amen. Amen. And you're going to enjoy the blessing of God in your finances. When people are trying to find money, I sense the Holy Spirit say, money will be trying to find you. Amen. 
Amen. God be blessing is going to go searching for your name and address. I'm going to follow you. Redemption is not reduction. Say that with me. Redemption, Redemption is not reduction. It's not reduction. Amen. 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 Certain cycles of financial lack and poverty is going to be broken off. Amen. Amen. There's so much of hatred comes to preachers who preach on financial blessing. And that is because they don't understand the scripture. 1 Timothy 6. The love of money is the root of all evil. Not money. Love of money. Money is neutral. It takes the character of the one who has it. If I have it, it's going to advance the kingdom of God. It's going to bless the poor. Because that's my nature. I want to glorify Jesus, preach the gospel. Make sure that people who are less fortunate are blessed. Money is neutral. It takes the character of the one who has it. Amen. We want to see you know, prosperity, blessing manifested. I declare that you will see prosperity manifested. Amen. 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 Lift your hand and say, I will see a manifestation I, of the I blessing of God in my life. You heard about blessings, blessing but the blessing of it, life. the blessing of the Lord may be manifested over your life. You don't want poverty in your life. You don't want lack in your life. Why would you want it? Deuteronomy 15 verse 4. Look at that scripture. Except when there may be no poor among you. Let there be no poor among you. For the Lord will greatly. That's enough. See because poverty will make people undermine you. Poverty will humiliate you, demote you. You don't want that. Look at somebody and say, I don't want that. Amen. Amen. that will determine what type of schools your children should go to, what kind of colleges you need to send them to. How can it be bad? The gospel is free. But, you know, just to make sure that it goes forth across the world, it's finances that is needed. have malnutrition. Why? Because of poverty. The food, the quality of food that they eat. Why would you want to lose your dignity by being in debt or in poverty? So I pray and I prophesy that the curse of poverty and debt be broken off in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Lift your hand and say the curse of poverty be broken off from my life. The curse of poverty be broken off from my life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Look at somebody and say, I refuse to be poor. I refuse to be poor. So there's nothing spiritual about it. Look at Proverbs.
Proverbs chapter 19 verse 4. The 19th chapter of Proverbs. Yes. Wealth. Wealth. Makes many friends. Wealth makes what? Many friends. Uh, wealth makes? Many friends. Yeah, no, no wonder you have so many friends. <laughs> <laughs> wealth makes many friends. Yeah. But the poor yeah. is separated from his friend. See, but the poor are separated from their friends. Nobody wants to be the friend of a poor person. It lowers your dignity. People don't call you for their party. They don't invite you for a marriage. You call them, they don't even return the call. Forward, that's what it does. You need the blessing of it, the blessing of God that makes you rich. I remember, you know, I don't know whether I should share it, but I remember years back, very long time back, you know, there was a marriage proposal that came for me years back. And so, that is when I was reading my life, my, I'm still living my life by faith. But that is about saying, I never knew from the scriptures that God would take care of you. I was willing to live and die for Jesus. So it didn't matter. And I still am. So, the, the, the family asked me, how are you going to live? How are you going to take care of your marriage partner? I said, my faith. <laughs> We got a sh long story short that never happened because that person said I grew up with a silver spoon I mean so once uh, I asked somebody would you like a guy who's got a six pack or six cars Would you like a guy who's got a six pack or six cars? And then girls said, I would rather have the six cars. <laughs> Look at Proverbs chapter 19, verse 7. All the brothers of the poor hate him. My God, the friends hate him. How much more do his friends go far from him? See, see, in the both words you read, the friends hate him if you're poor. And here it says, the brethren, the brothers. The brothers, ah. the brothers what? Seventh verse, Proverbs 19, verse 7. Brothers of the poor hate him. All the brethren oh. of the poor do hate him. Gosh, no family function, you're not called. Your opinion is not taken. You're not there in the family meeting. Because you they think you cannot bring any value addition, you know. You don't want somebody who is a liability sticking close to you. It is sad when you are hated by family. Your opinions don't matter. Your voice doesn't matter. What the family imposes on you, you take it. You are forced to dance to the tune because you are poor. can't give children proper education but I pray anybody who's watching me that it won't be your portion amen. that you would be set free from that bondage amen. of poverty and the curse of amen. death amen. Amen. and that God's favor will come yes. upon you the blessing yes. of it that makes you rich yes. will come amen. upon you amen, amen. amen. hallelujah look hallelujah. at Ecclesiastes the ninth chapter well my brothers are not like that huh? they take care of me You're wondering whether I preach it from experience. No. <laughs> they are nice brothers. They take care of me. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verses 14 onwards, 14 to 17. There was a little city. Yes, there was a little city. With few men in it. Mm. And a great came, great king came against it, besieged it, and built great snares around it. Mm. 
Now there was found in it a poor wise man, mm. and he by his wisdom delivered the city. Mm -hmm. Yet no one remembered the same poor yet, man. Yet nobody remembered the poor man. The poor man had a lot of wisdom, but nobody remembered. Yeah, you know, people don't want to listen to you. The poor man's wisdom is disrespected. No one wants to listen to your advice. Poverty can make a handsome man look ugly. It can make a beautiful girl look ugly. And I remember there was a girl who used to come. She was extremely poor. And then she married somebody who was extremely rich. And the next couple of times I saw her, wow, same girl, but she was looking so beautiful. There's no more stress on the face. The clothes are different. May God prosper you. Amen. This financially here, don't look at the economic times or the share market and be depressed, but look at God's word and be encouraged. Amen. The blessing Amen. of God makes one rich and he adds no, no sorrow, sorrow to it. it. Wow. Amen. No sorrow attached to it. Amen. Isn't our Lord wonderful? Amen. In Jesus' name, so sweet. sweet. Emmanuel's name, so, so sweet. sweet. Jesus' name, so sweet. Emmanuel's name, so sweet. But Jesus' name, so sweet. Emmanuel's name, so sweet. Jesus' name, so sweet. Emmanuel's name is so sweet. Jesus' name so sweet. Emmanuel's name so sweet. Jesus' name so sweet. Emmanuel's name so sweet, oh Jesus' name so sweet, Emmanuel's name so sweet, a rock, a rock upon Jesus, Jesus' name, how does it go? Name so sweet, Emmanuel's name so sweet, Jesus' name so sweet, Emmanuel's name so sweet. We shall sing the song at church, you know. I had the song in my spirit all through while we, I was here, but a couple of those words I swallowed. Amen. But the main thing is, Jesus' name is really sweet. Emmanuel's name is so sweet. Amen. 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 Poverty is not the will of God for you. Amen. When you're poor, your motives are doubted. People find it hard to trust you. Are you with me? This poor man, he had wisdom, but nobody trusted him. Look at Proverbs 13, verse 22. Mm -hmm. 
A good man leaves an inheritance to a, his. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Mm -hmm. But the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. A good man. Put please your hand upon your head and say, "I'm a good man." A good, good man leaves an inheritance, leaves an inheritance for his children's children. To his children's children. But what happens to the poor? Wealth of the sinner is stored up. See, the, the poor man has got no inheritance to leave. You're not going to leave debts and liabilities to your children. You're going to live an inheritance amen, amen, amen. for your children and for your children's children. Amen, amen and amen and amen. Your children will not live in a liability because of you. Amen. I prophesy it into somebody's life. Somebody who's going through a lot of debt and you, those debt is bearing on you, you feel heavy, stressed out. God wants to remove that right now from your life. Let that heaviness go. Let that spirit of heaviness go. You're just troubled about how you're going to pay off those debts, how you're going to find a way through. Let that heaviness go from your life in the name of Jesus. Let the peace of God come upon your soul. God is telling you, do not be afraid. Look up to Him. You will come out victorious. And you will live inheritance to your children's children. Amen. Amen. Your children, your grandchildren will be glad because of you. Amen. Amen. Wow. Amen. Amen. Can you hear that? Your grandmother is going to say, I mean, not your grandmother. Your, <laughs> your great grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> Your great grandchildren are going to say, I had a great great grandmother who left me a bank love. Who left me an investment. A well that will never run dry. Amen. To open up for you and for your generations. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Ooh, I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Financial level Rakil in the name of Jesus, Lord. We give you glory and honor. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Some of you will have your own businesses. You will have multiple streams of revenue coming into your life. Amen. 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 Some of you who want to start a business but you don't have the capital. Supernaturally, God is going to provide for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, let's stretch our hands towards the crowd, and to, towards people who are watching us. Pray for them to enjoy the blessing of God, the blessing of it, the blessing that makes one rich to come over your children. Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak it over your congregation. We speak it over your people. Bless them by the power of your right hand. Remove every poverty, every debt, every fear of lack, from their lives. Release them into the blessing of God. May their wealth be preserved in this time. All that you've given them be preserved in the name of Jesus. And may they enjoy the blessing of God. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus name. Amen. Lift your hands and thank the Lord for some time. Glory, 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 glory. Thank the Lord for some time. 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 Rabba Lava Thank you, Jesus. Praise your Father. Amen.